Okay, so... Yeah, you may have you, you may have seen from the title, I've gone down a rabbit hole and I'm like really angry. So this is actually something that I discovered. There's this whole scene, right, on, on the internet that's like mapping, right? Uh, so people take their little fantasy realms of imagination and they express them through a map and then they post it on the internet. And uh, obviously, they got to China. They, uh, with three weird parentheses, not 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 the round parentheses. They're not Jews. They're I don't know. That they're the redditors, the liberals. I don't know. I don't fucking know. The Westerners. And they started making maps about China. Now, I like China, so let's take a look at a few that I found. And as I said, it's a rabbit hole. Like s some of these are just insane. Anyway. Um, First, though, before we take a look at, like, the fictional shit, we have to, you know, look at, like, real stuff. Now, China's big, as you may know. Uh, and so, yeah, and a lot of these maps, by the way, are, like, China divided into 17 million things, right? Uh, because I think there, there's something, there's something, I think, about these people who just, like, I think there's just some, like, self automated react they're just like programmed to hate china right um like it's it's just insane just how much china gets split in these maps and so yeah the, um, i think they're programmed to hate china they're robots actually and uh they're on twitter and they're on reddit but there are real reasons why we would want to like not look at china as just a single block that you see on political maps right and so Let's take a look at them. Uh, just just so we set things straight, right? Now, uh, method number one, of course, all, as always, uh, there's always someone that brings up genetics. I I hate it when these things, when these, like, genetic maps... Let's actually get the pen over here. I hate it when these, like, genetic maps are released because it always gives a, like, very, very weird idea as to what is actually going on with people uh because he, the, the the funny part is like you see over here you know a nice neat division between one type of person and another type of person and that is um by the way excuse the nine dash lines that is just like not how people work right like the genes that differentiate one ethnicity from the other are like 10 in oh by the way don't quote me on the actual science of it but it's very very that there's a very very low amount of genes that separate one ethnicity from the other and you know mankind has millions of single genes in the in, in our genetic code all right and a handful separate one quote-unquote type of person from another when we're speaking about ethnicity, all right? Um, right. And uh, what's funny is this map that I took from this website, the One Family, One World Project, um, basically the map says one thing, but the text that they have sort of, yeah, that they've uh, coupled the map with to explain it tells the exact opposite. It tells basically what I was saying. And it's like, see how whole humans are connected with one another as one big family, you know? Um, historically, people tended to marry much more frequently within the confines of their geographic linguistic uh, boundaries. The Han population was divided according to the parameters of the Han dialects and not along the political borders of modern provinces. So, in other words, there's a lot more mixing than you'd expect, right? And yet, the map neatly separates, like, you know, yeah, here, Uyghurs. And, of course, this is supposed to be, like, a majority um, within a region. It's not like everyone here is Uyghur 100%. 
But again, the map does not explain that, which is why I hate these fucking genetic map be maps, because it's like, it's just Nazi food, basically. It's just Nazi bait, you know? It's like, oh, yeah, there is there is the ethno, you, you know, yeah, the, the ethnic purity or whatever, right? Which is not how things work, but whatever, you know? So you can see that according to this genetic profiling, this racial profiling that we've got going on here, um, some Western regions of, this is the Chinese province of Sichuan today, this, this thing, some of the Western region has some Tibetans, the, the province of Qinghai, which is this weird blob, has some Tibetans and some Mongols, you know, uh, Xinjiang is a mess of Kazakhs, Uyghurs, Kyrgyz, Tajiks, and uh, Han Chinese and just regions that are just desert. This is depopulated. Uh, and then there's a trillion types of... There's the Hui, who are a Muslim group um, that's like... Ethnically, it's basically Chinese. Linguistically, it used to be Persian. Now it's Chinese. They're descendants of basically ancient um, Central Asian Muslim uh, merchants that settled in the regions of the Western sort of uh, Western Gate towards what some call China proper, which is, as you all may know, this gigantic continental shape that we've got going on here. Uh, then you have in the southwest you have just a mess that is the ethnic makeup of the Yunnan and Guangxi provinces and Guizhou provinces, basically these ones that I'm highlighting right now. And uh, then other than that, you just have basically several different types of Han people. Uh, here it says Hans with an S because I don't know. Um, it's a plural, uh, but yeah, Han, you know, are just like what we like what we call Chinese people. Of course, all these other people are also, in a modern sense, Chinese people. Also, for some reason, they have included Mongolia, which is yeah, whatever. I mean, it used to be part of China, now it doesn't or during the Qing Dynasty. Um, Interestingly enough, you may notice that this is going to come in handy uh, a little bit later. There aren't a lot of ethnic Manchus. Now, uh, the Manchu language doesn't exist anymore, but ethnically, there's still like a little, little marker of what used to be the Manchus, which used to, or who used to occupy essentially this entire region. They also used to be like here uh, in modern day Russia. They essentially used to occupy, like, this region that I've highlighted over here, right? Um, and here we have that actually most of it is Han. And that is because uh, migration from the more populous regions in North China towards the very, very sparsely populated Manchuria has basically uh, sort of ethnically cleansed the Manchus, all right? And then there's also a nice Korean minority in the, in the Jilin region, in the, the prefecture of Yen Bien today, and also a couple of pockets of Koreans are over. But basically, the only Manchus that are left, there's there's a tiny amount of the Korean border. I'm not really not sure why this exists, but I'm going to trust them. And then there's a couple of um, tribal areas, essentially in the far north reaches of Manchuria, that have a tiny amount of sort of population, but that they are, they, they still are sort of the, re the, the regions with the most Manchu heritage out of all of northeastern China, which used to, again, be Manchuria. And these are the Dars and the Evenki and a couple of others, uh, a couple of other Manchu family, um, or it would be more accurate to say Jurchen family populations. The Jurchens are the ones that later down the line are going to be called the Manchus, but the Manchus really just refers to the confederation of the Jurchens that was led by the ones that were living in the area of sort of the central Manchuria region, the Jilin and sort of Liaoning region. And yeah, that's basically... And by the way, these like central and southern Manchurian Manchus back in the day of, like, the Qing Empire or whatever, saw these, like, northern Manchus as kind of, like, you know, tribesmen, you know, kind of backward. 
and yeah, so that's that's basically about it. And you, and as you can see, uh, the Han are divided into a few groups. You know, you got your Eastern, your Wu, uh, you got your Lower Yangtze, you got your Shandong. Interestingly enough, not like most of like modern Shandong province is not Shandong. This is like basically this Shandong Han thing is where China originates supposedly uh, in prehistory. And then the people that were here expanded and took over everything, right? Uh, and yeah, you've, you've got a couple of groups sort of roughly corresponding to some of the modern provinces, such as the Gan being the Jiangxi guys, uh, Hakka, of course, being an important group. Um, basically, these are people that migrated from central and northern China down to the south in the 13th and 14th century. And yeah, again, a couple of groups that are sort of re sort of corresponding to the modern provinces with a couple of weird uh, exceptions and, you know, weird discrepancies. But yeah, that's uh, that's just what you'd expect. You know, different provincial regions have different, uh, you know, different makeup. Now, oh, um, I really, oh, okay. I really, I was gonna say, I really don't want that. Uh, I really don't want those those pen markers to stay there. Anyway, the second uh, reason why you would want to divide up China is language. Now, uh, we in the West say Chinese, right? I studied Chinese. An alternative you hear the term Mandarin, which is not an accurate term, but it's a it's accurate to have the term Mandarin, although Mandarin is just kind of a Western rendition of what the Chinese call Putonghua. Putong just means normal, uh, standard, and Hua is speak, uh, you know, a speak, uh, language. So the Putonghua is just a standard language or common tongue, I guess, uh, much like you have standard American English or standard English English. And then you have a bunch of varieties of this language, some of whom, some of which are more intelligent than, or intelligible than others. Um, so yeah, the second way you can divide China is with languages. I've got a couple of maps over here. As you can see, both of them are relatively the um, pretty much the same. Um, the main linguistic groups, when it comes to um, this quote-unquote Chinese language or Mandarin or whatever you want to call it are the uh, Jin, which is this orange thing. Then you've got a sort of, you know, Beijing dialect. Uh, here, Mandarin is just represented as one single thing, while in this uh, other map, we've got uh, basically a couple of varieties identified. Uh, mostly according to just generally, again, these kind of macro-regional groupings uh, of people that sort of straddle between some of the provincial borders, such as the Central Plains, which includes, you know, the Wuhan, uh, Hubei region, and some parts of the Henan region. And then here you've got your Jianghuai, which is basically northern Jiangsu and um, Anhui province. And your southwest, which is basically Sichuan, plus um, you know a little bit of extension into the Guizhou and you know some of these other regions, and then you've got your northwestern grouping, and then uh, as you go down, you start to uh, the sort of intelligibility starts to decrease, and the map sort of shifts to different colors to represent the Shanghai dialect. Um, or in, in general, I suppose the Eastern dialect, which would be the Wu. Uh, again, you see this Wu. This is just from like the ancient kingdom of Wu. You see this Gan. Some of these are just like ancient names for um, for Chinese provinces, or what today are Chinese provinces, but used to be um, before basically uh, the Qin dynasty, before the sort of modern unification of modern the modern Chinese empire as we know it before Qin Shi Huang the first emperor 
these used to be independent kingdoms um, or semi-independent kingdoms under the Zhou dynasty and then later um, in the spring and autumn and the warring states period. Basically, this is when China was split into a bunch of different kingdoms that were rivaling its ri rivaling one another for supremacy. Um, and the China that I'm referring to in this case basically excludes this entire southern region, um, which gets conquered later down the line by the Qin and the Han, which are the dynasties that sort of correspond to the Roman Empire. When we, when we look at the timeline, basically when the Roman Empire was you know forming and rising, China was uniting in the shape that we know today. So there are reasons why we would want to have the Chinese be you know, not seen as a single monolithic entity. You can see that this right, right, uh, oh, and also another important uh, couple of, um, important couple of groupings that we need to be aware of are the Min, that are basically in Fujian province, uh, which is the southeastern province with this dark teal color, who are also the people that mostly colonized Taiwan in the late 19th century. Um, before then, Taiwan was very sparsely populated, mostly by Taiwanese aborigines, who still today live in the sort of far eastern parts of Taiwan, the more mountainous parts, while the western ones, the, the ones who we call Taiwanese, are actually most closely related with the Fujianese across the strait, who are, again, sometimes known as the Min. You've got your Hakka again, um... This this is a very important group. I'm gonna I'm gonna at some point talk about the Hakka on this goddamn channel because I, I it always it always comes down to the Hakka. The Hakka are the Chinese Jews and blah blah blah. Uh, this is a joke. Please don't like report me for anti-Semitism. Um, if you get the joke, good. If not, yeah, you'll you'll get it. You'll get it. At some, I'll explain it at some point. And then you got your Cantonese, all right? Uh, who are also the people that are in Hong Kong? If you've ever wondered why, if you like. Uh, if you have a Hong Konger and a Chinese mainlander and you get them to speak, uh, the Hong Konger most likely is going to speak Cantonese. Now, Cantonese is also spoken in some of the areas of China's Guangdong province, which is the southernmost blob. Um, and as you can see here on the right map, this is all represented as Cantonese, also known by the name Yue, which is, again, this other sort of ancient name for this kingdom that used to be called Yue, and then it was a province, you know, uh, in the Chinese Empire. And then there's, as you can see, a bunch of blank spots in this map. That is because it's not counting minorities. And uh, as you can see, again, Yunnan is just a fucking mess. In here, ethnicities are just interspersed. There's valleys. There's harsh geography. You don't know what the fuck is going on. What the hell is this? You know, like, yeah. There, there's just pockets of, uh, you know, Chinese settlement. And then um, there's a bunch of, well, today, sinicized, but ethnically distinct minority regions. These are like the reservations of China, basically, the, the harsh frontier. Um, along with, again, Xinjiang, the far northwest. These are complex regions. You cannot simplify them too much. Um, a lot of the times you're going to be seeing people talk about Xinjiang and talk about Uyghurs. It's not just Uyghurs. There's Kazakhs. There's Kalmyk. These are Mongol peoples that migrated to, um, migrated to the western steppes and then came back. Some of them are still in Russia, which is why there's a Kalmyk Republic in Russia. Some of them came back to the Chinese Empire. Um, and submitted themselves to the Qing dynasty, and they were allowed to live in the northwest in their pastures. Um, there used to be other types of Mongolian peoples that got genocided. Uh, there's Kyrgyz people. It's just a mess, you know. Uh, you can't simplify these things and just like paint it in one color in a map. You're gonna see why I'm I'm talking about this so much, right? And as you can see, you know, there's your little Mongolian pocket in the Qinghai region, which is another one of those like really complex places. There's the Amdo Tibetans, and then there's the mainland Tibetans. Over here, I appreciate that this map is differentiating between the two different or the various different types of Tibetans. These All these tiny pockets over here in sort of um, in this 
crossroads region between the mainland, the sort of main Chinese, main Mandarin, and the Tibetan. These are also sort of Tibetan-like peoples, but they're on the periphery of what used to be the Tibetan Empire. And so, yeah, that's that's about it. Um, that's about it for the language. As you can see, there's a nice, in here with the language, there's a nice sort of north-south split. Uh, because when we talk about language, these uh, languages to the, oh, oops, uh, perhaps I should not give me back the languages. Um, when we talk about this, you know, This north-south split, the, the main thing that's splitting here is the Yangtze River, which runs something like this, all right? Um, and this is historically an important dividing line in China, right? Because it's a big river. Why wouldn't you have a big river as a dividing line? Anyway, uh, basically the southern regions and the northern regions... It's not like they hate each other, but they're more sort of sharply split than either of them within, all right? Like, the difference between this and this is not as big as with this, all right? And when we talk about the language situation, these languages to the south and southeast are still so-called Sinitic languages. Uh, like a person from Shanghai, if he speaks in, like, harsh you know, Shanghai dialect, he's going to understand someone from Beijing or whatever. But it's going to be, like, weird, you know? Um, it's kind of a bit like, I don't know, uh, someone speaking in, like, Chicago slang, right? Southside Chicago uh, slang going to London. You know, they're, they're going to understand them, but it's weird, right? Okay, so that's just the linguistic side of it. And if we go forward, oh, please, uh, I don't particularly care about having the pen anymore. Uh, thank you so much. And then the other, the, the other uh, another, or another uh, way that you can divide it is by uh, finding sort of national units within China. Now, China's so big that it's basically a continental state or an empire, right? Um, a bit like the, the, the you know the, the way that I always frame it is imagine if the Roman Empire had never fractured in the Western or in the Mediterranean world it would be more appropriate. Uh, so like today you know France, Italy, Switzerland, a part of Austria, a part of uh, Hungary and the Balkans and Turkey, and the northern Mediterranean coast, and Spain, and Portugal. What if that was all one country? Even You can even take out, uh, you know, Britannia, uh, which is England plus Wales, which was, you know, conquered by the Romans. Imagine if that was a single country. That would be... Uh, and, and you wouldn't have such a radical shift in how the culture and the sort of historical linguistic heritage of all these peoples. This would not be so different from in this alternate history from our current history. Same with China, right? Uh, but it's a single country, right? Uh, and here you can see that like some of these units, they're also like named and retarded things. Why the fuck is it called a refuge? Oh, I know why. It's because... Um, it's because when, for example, the Japanese invaded China, the government ran away here, and it's you know it's a nice it's a nice place surrounded by mountains and all that. Uh, no fucking idea why this is called Shangri La, uh, and no idea why it's got this province, which would be more appropriately grouped up with the back door, the red thing, the Canton region. As you can see, there's also a nice. There's also like an economic argument to this kind of uh, this kind of these kinds of groupings, right? Uh, there's even people who um, did this kind of thing for, like, for example, for North America, right? Uh, this doesn't necessarily mean that they think that all these countries should be independent. It's just you know the different units, the different basic units of how the country operates, and this is 
relatively accurate, except for the retarded names. The Yellow Land? What the fuck is the Yellow Land? This is fucking... It's also racist. Like, what the fuck? The Yellow Land? Jesus Christ. What the hell? Um... This, uh, I haven't, I wouldn't, like, look at this, like, population and GDP data too hard because this is from 2010 and, and China is a country that changes very rapidly when it comes to those, like, big demographics. Um, again, big numbers, that means they change quickly. Uh, but as you can see, you, you can see there's, like, a sort of, um, fundamental similarity that we have. Again, this, this is wrong, this should be read, this... West, this this province over here, this Guangxi province, is much more closely connected with Canton, the Guangdong, um, than the far west. Uh, you can see that there's a couple of shapes that we can recognize, right? The the mega northern and northwestern and Tibetan frontier region, obviously, um, very different from inland, but proper China. Coastal China in the far e in, in sort of the east and the southeast, very different from inland China. Far southern China with Canton, its own kind of thing. And in fact, this would also be like the place that, you know, in real life, if we if you go there, you, you'd find the most people who are like, yeah, we are different, right? Uh, I'm I've never been to China, disclaimer, so I might be wrong, but this is just from the contact that I've had with Chinese people abroad, right? And if you look at like a, a, um, a physical map mode, the other ones would make sense. Like the other groupings of provinces would make sense because here is where the Yellow River is flowing, uh, where you have the dividing line, roughly, although it, it goes like something like this. Um, and then it intersects with the Yangtze. So basically you have Northern China, you have central China, you have eastern China, and you have western China. Um, yeah, this all of this makes somewhat sense, right? And it is very, very similar. Shh, go away. It is very, very similar to another way you can divide it up, which is sort of the economics of it. Now, this map comes from a... Um, uh, a few sort of uh, the, the work of a of an academic called known as William G. Skinner, known as uh, who was called William G. Skinner. Um, I'm not sure if he's alive or not, uh, but he basically did his work in the 60s and the 70s, sort of um, analyzing uh, the Chinese economy throughout basically the imperial period, especially the late imperial period, which goes from the 1200s slash the 1400s, depending on who you ask all the way to the fall of the empire. Um, basically, by analyzing the economic sort of uh, data available on the various provinces and the national, quote-unquote, level, he has divided up China into... Uh, well, he, he divided it into nine, but some people go from seven to ten, right? Uh, some people add and some people subtract so-called macro regions so basically entities that um are made up of several provinces whose boundaries are sort of similar but again not equivalent to the modern day political provinces of china and as you can see this map is very very similar to the one from the previous slide right you have a northwestern um you have a northwestern group that uh then later gobbles up the frontier area uh if we talk if we're talking in a contemporary sense you have an upper yangtze this is just the you know the, the yangtze river as you can see over here nicely highlighted uh and yangtze is so important economically that in an economic map you're labeling upper yangtze middle yangtze lower yangtze uh, and these are just the eastern region the central region and the western region that we were talking about earlier then you've got your southwest, you know, again, you know, Yunnan, Guizhou, your Lingnan, which is just, you know, two, uh, it's the, t it's the two Nans, basically, uh, which is the, 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 the far southern region. Uh, one of them is Guangxi, and the other is Guangdong. Then your southeast, which later gobbles up Taiwan, and your northern China. And then you're in Manchuria, you're northeast. This is 
academics, right? Now we get to the insanity. Because th all of this so far that I've said makes sense. Now we get to the insanity. Look at this. Uh, of course, a lot of this comes from fucking like Twitter or, or Reddit or uh, even like deviant art. I don't know, just all these sites where just like internet degenerates scatter and, and just like say dumb shit. As you can see, we've got Jeremy Taylor at China Crisis Now. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna do like an Alex Jones voice for for all these people. Here's hashtag China's real hashtag borders. Never forget hashtag Tibet is not a part of China. Never forget the hashtag Uyghurs land of East Turkestan. What hashtag Chinese regime calls hashtag Xinjiang is not a part of China, and Inner Mongolia is not a part of China. All these lands are being illegally occupied by China. All right. So if you if you're gonna use this logic, then like. All of America, like west of the Appalachians, is is not part of the United States, all right? Because they took it from the Native Americans. The, the eastern part, they took it from the Native Americans too. But like, let's even like just give the 13 colonies to the United States. Let's, let's just assume that the 13 colonies and the Louisiana Purchase are legal American territory or, or whatever. Then they still did the westward expansion killed everyone that was there, occupied it, right? So I'm guessing that Mr. Jeremy Taylor uh, is American and loves the United States and is very patriotic. So give California back to Mexico, give Oregon to Canada, um, you know, restore native lands in, in Oklahoma and like fucking Montana and, and all these places in the middle. But yeah, this is a very, very basic. If we're taking, if we're looking at just like the map portion of it, this is just a very, very basic uh, way of dividing up the China. You know, um, you have Inner Mongolia, which is this part given over to Mongolia. You have Xinjiang just being f just plopped as East Turkestan. Again, as we saw earlier, this is this place is a mess when it comes to ethnicities. It's like the Balkans, all right? You can't expect an ethnically pure... And East Turkestan, by the way, would be an ethnic nation-state because it would be about what we today call the Uyghurs, although historically that term is very weird, but today we just call them the Uyghurs, which is this Turkic... Muslim, um, Turkic speaking Muslim popular Muslim religious population that is different from a bunch of other Turkic speaking Muslimly religions, <laughs> Muslim religion populations such as again the Kazakhs and the Tajiks, and all these guys, uh, also Turks, also Muslims, but they're distinct. They're not exactly the same. Their language is slightly different. And historically, the Uyghurs are sort of the remnant of an ancient uh, set settlement presence of basically um, sedentary farmers in oasis areas that were at odds with the Mongols. It's it's a complex fucking environment, all right? Um, and then they merged with a nomadic Turkic group uh, who were known back then as the Uyghurs, who were this sort of, in this Uyghur empire, which was in the 10th century, were the ruling elite. And they were sort of, um, they were lording over these so-called Taranchis. And in the historical literature, you see the term Taranchis used a lot, which are, again, these like settled, but Turkic, but settled, not nomadic, settled farmers in the oasis areas. Again, East Turkestan has just like gigantic deserts. Oh, and I just like accidentally did. Please, no. Um, East Turkestan is like, has has very gigantic deserts. In the northeast, you have the Gobi. In the southwest, you have the Taklamakan. And uh, settlement is mostly um, possible along the basis of the Tarim and uh, fucking, I forgot the other uh, river name, but basically there's a couple of river basins that run from the Himalayas and the uh, sort of western mountainous, the uh, mountain range. Um, the Altai and Tian Shan, which is this like north northwestern mountain range. The rivers flow down, they create valleys, and settlement is mostly here. 
And these people are at the odds with the people who are up here because up here was where generally the nomads were living and they're coming down and then like enslaving them or whatever. At some point, one Turkic group comes from the north, comes down, takes over, forms this gigantic empire called the Uyghur Empire. They fight with the Tibetans, they fight with the Chinese, eventually it falls. And that's why they're called Uyghurs today because eventually these two different types of Turks combine into one. Um... Yeah, you can, like, imagine why, if this was an independent country, this would become kind of weird, because if that is, like, the main ethnicity, right, all the other ethnicities that are present are going to be oppressed by that group, because they are going to become the new majority, and the other ones are going to become the new minorities. Also, there's a ton of Chinese people by now that live in Xinjiang. So that's why Xinjiang is a fucking complex issue. Tibet is just like, whatever, you know, Tibet, it's, it's weird. Uh, let's not talk about Tibet. I honestly, I, I'm not going to talk about Tibet ever in this because I, the Tibet, like, debate is just retarded. Anyway, uh, a nice reply to this that I found, uh, again, going down the rabbit hole, was this <laughs> nice account called For Manchu's Freedom. Uh, I, by the way, I love this picture of, like, I don't know, is this an F-35 or a Shenyang J-31, the, like, Chinese... F-35 looking aircraft. I have no idea. I can't, like... I'm not that nerdy about military aircraft. With a nice Manchukuo flag. <laughs> this avatar is great. Uh, saying, wrong map. Where is Manchuria? Do you have fundamental history knowledge? I love this. Oh, don't worry. We're gonna get to Manchuria. We're gonna get to Manchuria yet. This nice fellow by the name of Dan Harris is... Um, is, is, sh is spicing it up. We're, we're getting more complex. Look at this. We have Inner Mongolia, right? Um, Korea unified. Not sure why he decided to, like... I guess it's because, like, these people are, like, always, like, quote-unquote, anti-communist, all right? So they're anti-China, which is bad, uh, and anti-North Korea, which is also bad communist evil people, right? Uh... Although there seems to be kind of a schism within this community of, like, China haters uh, and China mappers as to whether or not, like, Korea should be kept divided. There's there's a few maps down the line that, like, have Korea divided, but, like, yeah, sure, I guess. Also, uh, imagine, like, having a map that's supposed to be, like, China, right? And then you include Korea, almost, like, implying that Korea is, like, China. I don't... Uh, just question mark. Um... Yeah, I have no idea what's going on. Basically, here we have just a gigantic eastern blob. Taiwan is independent, of course, which today, independent Taiwan, if we're just like strictly speaking, makes sense, right? Because it's had decades of separation from mainland China and culturally it is its own very distinct thing. They speak Chinese. But it, it, it is, it's very, very weird thing, all right? So I can understand why someone would be like, okay, Taiwan, okay. Then Ho, Ho with two O's, Hokkien. Now, Hokkien, as far as I know, is just another name of saying Fujian people. In fact, a ton of um, Taiwanese people speak Hokkien and they're Hokkien. Not sure why it's, it would include the Jiangxi province as well. Did, there's just a lot of weird grouping up of provinces. And then there's this massive fucking Cantonia. <laughs> which uh, is obviously supposed to be like Canton. So Guangdong, you know, uh, Guangzhou, the southern region. Which for some reason just gobbles up everything in this like supposed map and this map is like China is the world's greatest conqueror colonizer today and yet we are constantly subjected to those who claim that China has never invaded another country which is also another dumb position that some people take uh, those people are like really really retarded as well like I'm gonna be a centrist over here and say both sides there's like a bunch of people that claim that China can do nothing wrong and it's just a perfect civilization or whatever and the CCP is just the greatest uh, and then there's just, just these fucking, like, slow, slow-ass motherfuckers with really, really low-frequency brains that just, like, have to, like, just seethe at any, like, success that China ever scores. And they just want China to explode. 
into 17 different regions that are going to immediately fall into civil wars. Like, if China is, like, destabilized enough in real life that, like, it would actually blow up like this, it would be an incredible catastrophe and, like, hundreds of millions of people would die. But, like, I don't know. I guess uh, my Twitter map is just, like, you know, my Twitter mapping skills, you know, require the blood of innocence, you know. Uh, blood for the blood god or whatever. Anyway, the below map shows otherwise. Hashtag Nazi. First of all, I would like to say, do you have a source for this claim? Uh, because, like, we have a below map that says actual Chinese territory, but what's the source for that? Um, I'm going to be redditing the redditors a lot. And then there's a Republic of Hong Kong. I, I, there's there's a nice little text over here that says Republic of Hong Kong. What the fuck? Hong Kong is mostly populated by Cantonese people. Why wouldn't it be part of Cantonia? And why would the far western parts be part of Cantonia? This is like... this this These western blobs over here, these western regions, have as much to do with Canton as they do with Beijing. It's like, what the fuck are we talking about over here? <laughs> this just seems like someone something that someone drew with, like, I don't know, Hearts of Iron 4 or something. It's like someone played too much Kaiserreich um, and was like, oh, wouldn't it be based if, like, the Warlord era came back. And then, of course, you know, Ultra Tibet. Like, this is, like, Greater Tibet. This is another part. Okay, I said I, was, I wasn't going to be talking about Tibet. But, like, a lot of these maps show a gigantic Tibet. Like, the, the regions of the modern... Or the borders of the modern Tibet regions within China is something like this. Um, and in here, this is also massive. It includes all of Sichuan province, which is a, a province that is... In terms of, like, land area, it's not that gigantic. But in terms of population, it would be, like, the fifth biggest uh, or most populous country on Earth if it was independent. Actually, not today. It would be, like, within the top ten if it was just an independent country, all right? It's got, like, a hundred million people or something. The vast, vast majority of them are Han Chinese. But in the in the far western, like ultra mountainous regions, as we saw in the earlier maps that showed the sort of language and genetic sort of you know heritage um, background, there's this western, very mountainous region that separates it from Tibet, which is why Tibet, by the way, wasn't conquered earlier by China. It, it, it's a weird story between Tibet and China, but basically. Tibet becomes fully part of China in the late 1800s, or the late 1700s, in the late 18th century. Uh, before then, however, a lot of people count it as like a tributary of China. It's a weird thing. We're not going to get into it. Um, but basically, in this far western region of Sichuan, or far eastern region of Tibet, are ethnically Tibetan, eth uh, Tibetan-speaking peoples that, however, don't really have much in common with Lhasa, right? You know, which is the Tibetan capital. They were just minding their own businesses and being independent, like, petty kingdoms and tribes for the vast majority of their history. Uh, most of the time, paying tribute to either Lhasa or, or Beijing or Nanjing, depending on whichever power was, at that moment, ascendant. And then, of course, you got your single fucking East Turkestan. Again, you've got to just, like, separate China into 17 pieces, but East Turkestan, just one thing. Even though they would start murdering each other if this was real. Um, yeah, I don't know. And I like how China's just, like, nicely... Um, because in this, in this map, the guy is like, hey... I'm going to, like, split China up into, like, four or five pieces. And the result is that there's this weirdly shaped, like, proper China in the middle, all right? And this is this is actually a trope that gets repeated a few times, as we, we will see. And then there's, like, the weirdness of it. The weirdness is that, like, there seems to be just, like, a love of just... Either from ignorance or from just, like, straight-up wank of Japan... And I'm gonna I'm gonna explain to this, you know, ex I'm gonna explain why this Goetsu, and of course Manchuria. All right. Now here he says Manchuria, so he's he's holding off, and 
as you can see, a part of what we today would term Manchuria, which is this, uh, the um, this is the sort of eastern part of Inner Mongolia, is ethnically Mongol, quote unquote, and so it gets represented as part of Inner Mongolia. Now. Manchuria over here is represented as a country. Again, there's no more, like, there's almost no Manchus left. Practically nobody speaks Manchu as a as a sort of um, as a first language. And again, ethnically Manchu people heavily intermarried with Han, but for some reason Manchuria decides to be its own independent country, and not it is not called like the Northeast, which would make sense because. It's kind of the same as, like, the people that want the n northwest of the United States to be separate and called Cascadia. It's like, all right, you know, it's this region. Also, like, California independence or Texas independence. It's like, yeah, okay, I can see why. But Manchuria is today heavily, like, if, if you go up to a Chinese person and, and say, like, ah, uh, Nishitong, like, uh, I don't know. Nishitong uh, Changchun, which is a city. Nishitong Changchun, Lida, you're you're from Changchun. Nishiman Jorgen, you're a Manchurian. He is gonna like be like, are you dumb? Uh, Manchuria is what they called it during like the Japanese occupation. So like the Manchukuo. They just the, the, we use Manchuria in the West, but it's really like not very accurate. They say Northeast Dombay. Uh, so yeah. This is all pretty yikes because that Manchuria and also Goetsu was like a is like a weird thing that comes from a Japanese name for Eastern China, and basically this is part of like the wank of like Japanese imperialists is that they were going to like divide up China into these into all these parts and that they all and then all these parts could join the greater east asian co prosperity sphere without basically overwhelming uh japan and letting japan be uh the dominant actor in that particular political alliance of the 1930s so a lot of this uh a lot of the splitting up of china is like rooted historically in like japanese ultra nationalism so this is like a japan map and in fact, in some of these Twitters, you see some weird things like there's there's this whole weird Manchukuo LARP Twitter. I don't fucking know. Like, there's just a bunch of accounts. If you if you look up Manchukuo or Manchuria on Twitter, there's just a a fuckload of accounts that are just like LARPing like Manchukuo. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Someone please fucking like I don't know. What is going on? Why? Why is there Manchukuo LARP on Twitter? I don't fucking understand. The, the Concordia Association of Manchuria. Okay, uh, I need to stop talking about Manchukuo. Another nice map that I found. And here, here we get to like the actual, although this is like supposed to be an alternate history of 1929 China. We're not gonna go ahead and like bloat the video by talking about how China was in the 1920s, but, like, why is there the People's Republic of China here in 1929? Why is the Xinjiang, which is Xinjiang, you know, the Chinese name for this northwestern region, why is it the Xinjiang Republic, but with the Turkic flag? Why not East Turkestan Republic? Here, Tibet is small, as you can see. It's not greater Tibet. No inner Mongolia, but they include Mongolia anyway. For some reason, there's a Manchurian Soviet, which is like, what? I don't know. Is this supposed to be like some like USSR? This is, again, an alternate history map, so it's not like, yeah, okay. It's not made to be like someone's wet dream for like modern China. The Kingdom of Manchukuo in 1929. First of all, it was an empire. Like, why kingdom? Of course, Manchukuo. Why is Port Arthur, which was this port at the far southern tip of the of the Liaodong Peninsula, which is this peninsula, which used to be a Russian colony and then was ceded over to the Japanese, why is it a free city and not a Japanese colony? Why is Shanghai a free city? Shanghai Commonwealth? What the fuck is going on? Kingdom of Taiwan? What is going on? Democratic Republic of China and... 
what the fuck is a Han China? Is this supposed to be like a fascist? I don't know. Uh, why are people just like doing these weirdly, we weirdly fucking dumb maps? But again, this is supposed to be an alternate history of the 1920s, so it's like acceptable. If we were to like grade these maps, let's actually spice these things up and just like grade these things. Okay, so, oh, uh, if we're grading it, this one, uh, I guess this would be like a 7 out of 10 because it's a nice meme. It's just a nice meme of like how paint it is. This is just clearly made like in an, in like an hour or something by someone, just like this video. Um, yeah, then we go forward. This one, I, uh, if we're talking about like historical accuracy, this is like, or historical accuracy, I don't know, uh, just like... If we're talking about the rationality of it, this is a 1 out of 10. If we're talking about just like the meme factor, this is like a 10 out of 10. This is definitely just incredible. Just incredible work. Um, and then this one. This one is just like, from like a rationality standpoint, it's like 3 out of 10, I suppose. It's, I've seen worse, and from like a meme standpoint, it's like 2 out of 10. It's like all just like the same thing repeated, like Chinese People's Republic, Manchurian Soviet, that's the same fucking shit. Kingdom of Manchukuo, Kingdom of Taiwan, Shanghai Commonwealth, Free City of Port Arthur. I, I don't know what the fuck is going on here. Then here's another great alternate history, but this is supposed to be modern day. Uh, I, I found this on Reddit. And of course, everyone loves Reddit. It's like China after the Second Civil War. I think it's like on like alternate or alternate history maps. Submitted by the nice user Soviet Union 2291. Uh, thumbs up to you, uh, my fellow Redditor. Tips Fedora. Uh, you know, Reddit gold. Uh, give Reddit gold. I don't know, kind stranger. Uh, I haven't been on Reddit for a while. And as you can see over here, the Manchukuo includes like all of the inner Mongolian part. So big Manchukuo LARP. Um, and this, by the way, this is supposed to be a modern day, okay? For some reason, the Shanghai, um, the, the, the region north of Shanghai, which in real life is part of, um, well, yeah, with, with Shanghai in the north, this, this is in, in, in real life, this is Jiangsu province. For some reason, it is its own thing with, like, a weird flag. It's independent, just, like, doing its own thing. Then we've got, um, fucking Zhejiang, another region. It's also independent. Fujian, also independent, with, for some reason, a flag that is, like, from 1929, I think? This used to be, this used to be the flag of, uh... A separatist government in the late 1920s and early 1930s that basically wanted... Actually, no, 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 1932. Uh, the Fujian People's Government. Someone's gonna go ahead and like look at Wikipedia and see if I'm right or wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say 1932. This was a separatist government at the time of Chiang Kai-shek's regime in Nanjing who wanted Chiang Kai-shek to go back to the United Front with the Communists. Uh, who were at that point na in the neighboring Jiangxi just doing their own Soviet thing. So this is a very weirdly uh, specific flag that they found. I guess they just like looked up Fujian flag and found this one. If Fujian really became independent in real life, this would really not be its flag. But at least Fujian independence makes some modicum of sense compared to like these two northern regions, you know, Jiangs um, Jiangsu and uh, Zhejiang which really have no business being independent. This is just, like, all flat. There's no, like, natural defenses. And, like, except for, I guess, Shanghai, which is its own weird thing, <clears throat> no one here really feels separate from nor the northern Chinese. Shanghai is a weird thing. Like, the, the relationship, as far as I understand, between, like, most Chinese people and Shanghai people it's kind of like americans with new yorkers shanghai is just seen as this, this weird place where just you know people just speak weird you know that they all are like or you're either like ultra poor or like super rich and they're just generally perceived to be these snobby assholes this is just the stereotype but you know yeah 
And uh, in like the modern Chinese political landscape, generally Shanghai doesn't want to be like separate from everyone else. In fact, it wants to dominate everybody else. Um, like if you go back to chairmen's, you know, to uh, right now the leader of China, Xi Jinping, you go back, there was um, uh, fucking God damn it, my brain is not working. Jesus Christ. Who? Yeah. The Hu Wen era. Uh, Hu... Hu Jintao. Fucking hell, man. My brain is just not working after all the... All these fucking maps are just, like, lowering my IQ. Uh, Hu Jintao and Wen Jiabao was the government that was preceding the Xi Jinping government from 2002... 2001... Two, yeah, no, 2000 and... Uh, Uga Booga. 2002 to... 2012, and then the one that was before then, from 1992 to 2002, under Jiang Zemin, was known as the like Shanghai Click government because Jiang Zemin was party secretary of Shanghai before ascending to national leadership during the Tiananmen crisis. Um, yeah, basically that government was basically seen as like too Shanghai friendly, too friendly to the world because Shanghai is a trading city. So basically. This was the government of the so-called, you know, red capitalists or whatever, right? Um, yeah, basically, Shanghai is seen as like the global, the evil globalists um, in China. But again, it doesn't want to be like an independent country. So I don't know why the fuck they always have these like Shanghai independence. Now, Taiwan over here seems to be grouped up with fucking uh, Canton and Guangxi provinces. At least this looks like it because this is clearly like, you know, White Sun, you know, KMT, uh, Republic of China. I don't know. Today, Taiwan doesn't appear like they would want to, like, even if there was a civil war in China. I highly doubt that Taiwan would invade China. I think they would just be happy to be able to sit in Taiwan. Unless it was like, I don't know, for some reason, a KMT government that just decided to go insane. But yeah, basically, Taiwan today is like... There's a weird two-party system that's based around either pro um, pro one China policy versus anti one China policy. It's not really like pro independence versus anti independence from Beijing, because like even the KMT wouldn't like want to just get annexed by mainland China. The KMT is the nationalist party uh, that founded the Republic of China on Taiwan, and then there's the Democratic Progressive Party, right? Uh, and the Democratic Progressive Party has been in power for quite a while. So when we talk about the Democratic Progressive Party, they're generally seen as like the moderate wing of the independence faction in Taiwan. They're, they just, they, they're not going to go ahead and outright say Taiwan independence because then, you know, China's going to invade them. It's a weird situation over there with political norms and, you know, whether or not you're an independent country, a one China policy, let's not get into it. But basically, the one China policy is that agreement between the two sides of the Taiwan Strait that they are both the sort of representatives of a national government of all of China that includes both Taiwan and the mainland. Um, and again, there, there are some people in Taiwan who are currently in government who are against that, and they're more in general in favor of independence. But if they say we are like the Republic of Taiwan instead of the Republic of China, China's going to be like, bro, you're like literally a separatist, and technically being a separatist is illegal in international law, so we're going to invade you. It's more complex than that, but yeah, basically this is why there's the whole Taiwan independence debate. And a lot of these people that make these maps seem to love putting Taiwan as like an independent country, all right? But this guy, Soviet Union 2291, decides to make Taiwan into like wanting to re like invade China again. I don't know. Yunnan is its own separate thing. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck this is supposed to be. And of course, I got East Turkestan just again, you know, just ignoring the incredible complexity of that region. And for some reason, the sort of northwestern provinces of this is Gansu, uh, Qinghai, and Ningxia. These are like the free, um, free northwestern provinces that aren't Xinjiang. For some reason, there's just this Islamic China. Whoa, holy shit! I just now noticed this flag. 
it's got the Chinese star arrangement, which is like, I don't remember exactly what these stars are supposed to represent, but like, as far as I know, they're like, the big thing is like the party, then there's um, the, the bourgeois, the petty bourgeois, the workers and the peasants, I think, like the four national classes. I think that's why there's five stars on the Chinese flag. Don't don't get me wrong. Then there's like an Allahu Akbar. I think that's Allahu Akbar. And then <laughs> the star is integrated with a crescent. So this is like... <laughs> this is a great flag though. What the fuck? This is like Muslim communist China. Oh, no, 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 no. No spoilers. No, no, no. Don't, don't do this. It's like a Muslim communist China. Like, what the fuck is going on here? Like, and then you have a Venn diagram, right? So, like, it's communist China, the first Venn diagram. And then the second Venn diagram is Islamic. You know, Islamic State. Uh, and the, like, <laughs> and the intersection <laughs> is the star in the middle, which is this one. I don't know why I find this so funny. I, I don't know. Just, I don't know. The, the, the Hui Muslim Republic, the Islamic Republic of China. I don't know. I don't know why I find this so funny. I don't know why this exists. Not everyone in this region is Muslim. Not everyone in this region is Chinese. Not everyone in this region is Hui. It's a very complex place. As, as you, as you uh, saw in the earlier slides, there's Mongols there who are over here. There's Tibetans that are over here. Um, you know, Hui are in here, but there's also Han in here. This is a mess, and this is Mongols again. So yeah, this, that, that country would very, very quickly be very funny, to say the least. But uh, I do love how uh, someone in the in the comments of this Reddit post, which I fuck you, which I did not include, but someone uh, misidentifies what this is. I think supposed to be in the mind of Soviet Union two two nine one. He misidentifies this as like the Maklik, <laughs> which makes sense because if you look at the borders, this looks a lot like the Maklik from like, you know, Hearts of Iron 4. So yeah, I guess this is where he gets the idea that this is like just a, a Muslim place. I don't know, whatever. This is just hilarious in general. I just love this so much. If I were to grade that, that would be 10 out of 10 in terms of meme potential just because of the Islamic Republic thing. And then here we get to like the part that's like kind of sad because I found this from this, which is like clearly supposed to be like a Uyghur site, right? <laughs> I don't know the broken English. I don't know. This is like what, what this is supposed to be. The sort of title has no relations with the map. Although, uh, I don't know, maybe the article that was below, which is, in, I think this is Uyghur, um, you know, yeah, I see, you know, Muslim, Uyghur, Turkestan, Timur, are our China communists. Yeah, this this looks like Uyghur. It's either Uyghur or some Turkic language or Indonesian. I don't know. I'm not Indonesian. Why? I'm racist. Yeah, I think this is Uyghur. I don't speak Uyghur. I have no idea what this is. You know, I didn't, like, Google translate it. But it's sad because, like, there, there are legitimate grievances that the Uyghurs have. It's highly likely that the concentration camps thing is at least somewhat real. No, they're not getting genocided. But, you know, there is a bit of a cultural genocide kind of thing with, the, again, the re-education camps and all that. There are real legitimate reasons why you would criticize the government of China. But this does not mean that you would then say that, like, China is not a real country and it's just, you know, some people in Beijing just, like, making a giant empire and then again for some reason just fetishizing over like the periods in which china was invaded and occupied by japan you know with the manchukuo flag with the manchuria thing giant mongolia uh which by the way if like mongolia really did like annex inner mongolia in real life today then mongolia would become a majority like han chinese state because, like, Inner Mongolia today, ethnically and linguistically, is majority Han Chinese. Um, even though it is still called the Inner Mongolia um, Autonomous Region. And in fact, if you go ahead and look at the, into, like, even Google Maps and then something like that, if you go ahead and, like, zoom into Inner Mongolia, into, like, an Inner Mongolian prefecture, they're not called, like, 
municipality, like in China, or prefecture, or county, uh, you know, the Xian uh, County Subdivision, they're called banners. Like, they're still, uh, the, the subdivisions of Inner Mongolia are still called banners. So they've, they've got this weird, like, historical, you know, um, historical naming scheme for uh, their autonomous ethnic regions in China, where, like, even if you go ahead and see and, and, and look at, like, what used to be Mongol majority regions in the northwestern regions, um, if you zoom in, even in, like, the Qinghai Autonomous Region, um, which is not majority Mongol, but if you zoom in, there's going to be places that are called, like, Dalin Allah Banner. And it's like, all right. So you can see that these guys are Mongols, and then at some point there's, like, the Tibetan Autonomous Prefecture of whatever. I don't know. I just found that a nice piece of trivia if you ever, like, have or just, I don't know. Uh, have a, like bit of free time and just want to explore for some reason the internal administrative subdivisions of the People's Republic of China. Again, massive Tibet. Oh, no, 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 no. No spoilering. Oh, no. I spoiled the insanity. I spoiled the schizo maps that are coming. Then the Kingdom of Dali, which is... Yeah, here we get into like some of the historical names. Now, Dali, or the, the, the Great Li, or whatever, was a name was the name of a kingdom that was basically established in the Yunnan region, essentially in the period when the Mongol Yuan dynasty was falling apart, although there was, I think, a Dali kingdom was, that was preceding um, the Mongol invasions that later gets conquered. It's fucking complex. Uh, but yeah, basically... It was this kingdom that for a while kind of rivaled uh, the emerging Ming dynasty in China in, in the southwestern regions of China. And this is this would be kind of like if someone would, hi, hi, let's say hypothetically, make a map of Europe where like, I don't know, for some reason he hates France, right? So to counterbalance like French France, they, he, he explodes France into like 17 regions, right? And like all of northeastern France and some of some of southeastern France and like all of the Netherlands and all of Belgium are just and, and parts of Western Germany are just integrated into Burgundy. Just again, just completely just ra random name. Just not 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 to like make the people who play TNO cringe. And, and like all of this was Burgundy and, and was rivaling France. This would be like the European equivalent of saying that this actually is the kingdom of Dali. It's not China. And then again, Cantonia. No independent Hong Kong here. Plus one for that. Um, because again, Hong Kong, either a city-state or part of Cantonia. If Cantonia is independent, it, it just makes sense. And big Hokkien, again, kind of dumb. This part has very little to do with this part. And then this is weird. China, Republic of China, Zhonghua Mingguo, this, uh, this Chinese, these Chinese characters is Republic of China. Taiwan, Taiwan, it's just in parentheses, I don't know, what the fuck, like, just, let's just put the free parentheses, uh, I'm liking this one, 7 out of 10, definitely, although it is sad that you're a Uyghur, uh, and here we get to the schizo, here we get to, like, the insanity, that just, it's, we're, we're down way below the iceberg by now, like, what the fuck is supposed to be this, also, Ah, no, uh, I accidentally spoilered uh, that the person that posted this, of course, someone from Twitter, of course, he's Japanese. Ah, fucking Japanese people. Um, oh. Fucking Japanese people. Um, let's, we're going we're gonna to get to that later. Anyway, um, let's get back by pen. Uyghur. Uh, even better, not even East Turkestan, where you can, like, plausibly claim the, like, you know, the... Kazakhs and the and the, and the Tajiks are going to be represented. No, just Uyghur, just the Uyghur ethno state. <laughs> and again, for some reason, uh, Islamic Republic of East. <laughs> and you're gonna see that like there's just a bunch of weird language usage in, in some of these. Gigantic Tibet, just absolutely greater Tibet, just absolutely fucking, uh, you know. 
ein Volk, ein Reich, ein Dalai, äh, ja, ein Volk, ein Tibet, ein, da ein Dalai Lama. Uh, just full on fucking, you know, yeah, Gross Tibet, Inner Mongolia, which, I don't know, here it's represented as, like, independent, but, like, maybe I guess you would, like, group it up with Mongolia. Manchuria, with the fucking... You know, five races with the yellow being the Manchus being the biggest one. So, yeah. Um, Manchukuo. Again, I spoiler that the person is Japanese, so of course Manchukuo. Uh, and now we get to the schizo, because remember how earlier there was, like, these Chinas that were, like, so weirdly, like, stretched together, you know, in the middle, right? Well, here we st we're starting to like get down to the you know cru crush depth beneath the iceberg. All right, we're, we're we're down so far that the sea pressure is starting to creak at the shell of the submarine that we are in, and the the, the water is just dark and there's just monsters floating in, and these monsters are the subdivisions of sort of China proper. Here we see we still see a PR China, uh, the fucking. The Japanese guy. Here we still see up here China, but as you can see, it's basically just Shandong and a part of Henan province. East Shandong is just represented as Tin Kue. No idea what that would would be, but like I don't know. It's Qingdao. I see like a anchor looking thing, so I guess it would be a merchant republic. I don't fucking know. I don't fucking know. Uh, then. Uh, the Jiangsu province is split in two this time between Suzhouria, which I guess would be the... I I'm writing this bad, but I guess it comes from Suzhou, or actually... Yeah, it comes from like Suzhou, which is a city that's like right over here, I think, somewhere over there. Um, I might be getting the the, ge the like single geography very very wrong, but like it's basically just a city that is in, I believe modern day Hunan, which is the province that's like this, but it just groups up northern Jiangsu, which is like okay. Then that this is, this is starting to get insane. Then we have again the Gutland thing again this weird Japanese name for eastern China. And then down below, he adds the Chinese name of Wu Yue. Again, the Wu. Remember the Wu. This is like the actual Chinese name for this eastern region. It's Wu. It's not Gutland. Gutland is like... It's like uh, going to Strasbourg today and saying, Hello, my fellow Elsass-Lofringen Knights. It's like... <laughs> or so, I don't know. If I, or like going to Danzig. Or, or Danzig. Going to Gdansk in Poland. And saying, damn, uh, hello, hello, fellow citizen of uh, Danzig. I sure love being in Danzig. This is a great German city. It's like, I don't know. It's just such a weird thing. Formosa, for some reason, again, European. Now we're getting into the European as well. Like the Spanish um, name for Taiwan, Formosa. Or maybe it's Portuguese, actually. I don't know. Uh, but then the... I do appreciate, by the way, how he used the, just the characters Taiwan. The, 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 this flag over here in here has this writing. This is just the Chinese characters for Taiwan. So in the labeling, it's using Formosa, but then it's clearly using Taiwan. So might as well fucking call it Taiwan. No idea why the colonial LARPing. Uh, Formosa, again, was just, you know, a bit of a Western colonial name for it. Um... I do appreciate how he used a flag with Taiwan instead of, like, that horrible Taiwan independence flag with, like, two green um, fields with a white field in the middle. And in the middle of that white field, there's just, like, the island of Taiwan. It's, oh, it's just disgusting. It's a disgusting flag. I hate it, but whatever. Uh, and then the Gotland. Look at the flag of Gotland. For some reason, it's got the flag of the Shanghai Municipal Council. You know, the Shanghai International Settlement flag. This is a fucking colonial flag. It's like... 
holy shit, man. It's like going up to an American who lives in New England and is like, oh, you should be using the red flag with like the Union Jack in the top left, you know, that like the, the 13 colonies flag. <laughs> I don't know why the colonial, like, the just the love for colonial shit. I don't know. It's just so fucking weird. Then there's this weird Jinchuria in the middle with a like again these two flags are like the first republic of china flags so again this would be like a united china flag why is it a regional flag why is there a taoist thing i don't fucking know why is it an independent country like i i do appreciate however how it is nicely nestled between two rivers it is uh geographically and aesthetically pleasing um yeah and then we've got uh I suppose this would be like Wuhan, but actually he kind of fucked up because in real life Wuhan is on the three sides of this. Oh shit, I better. In real life, the city of Wuhan is on the three sides of the confluence of a river that's coming from here and a river that's coming from here. Uh, actually, it's like over here. I'm dumb. It's like, yeah, it's like here. And this thing down here is, I'm guessing, supposed to be Hunan. And this thing up here is supposed to be Hubei. I don't know. But for some reason, this thing down here, Fuxiangria, which is Hunan. I don't know why Fuxiang. I guess Xiang is the Xiang River, which is uh, the one of the ancient sort of markers of Hunan province. For some reason, it's got... the uh, the Wuchang Uprising flag with a blue thing. I don't fucking know. Here, however, Hokkien is split up in two. We have Hokkienam and then Komisaland. Uh, there's also a Komisaland Twitter that's much like the Manchukuo LARP Twitter. I don't, I don't fucking know. <laughs> you can tell that I went down the rabbit hole a little bit too much. There's a Komisaland Twitter. There's apparently one guy that thinks that Komesa land is like real or something. So yeah, Komesa land is Jiangxi province. Again, not sure why it would be an independent country. And again, ah, cardinal sin, Cantonia. Massive fucking Cantonia, but it's separate from Hong Kong. Why is it separate? Hong Kong is part of Cantonia. What the fuck? Um, I don't know. Um, yeah, then there's Highland, which is just Dali slash Yungwe slash Yunnan or Greater Yunnan. For some reason, they, they've included Vietnam with a different flag. As he wants to show that he's like anti-communist or something. And then Bashulia. <laughs> what the? Also, Hong Kong with the British flag. It's British. It's actually British. It's not independent. Why the colonial thing? Why do they love colonial, like, China so much? I don't fucking know. I guess, like, I guess to them it's, like, the enlightened, like, westernizing, like, liberal conservative order. I don't fucking know. And then this is something that I see quite a lot, you're, you're gonna see quite a lot, is a Sichuan province becomes this Bashulia country. I'm not sure what the fuck. You know, uh, I'm not even sure if this is like a historical name or anything. At least with like Suzhou, there's a city, you know, it comes from a city. Qinque, likely this Qin comes from Qing, which is Qingdao. Then the Beijing region is Yu Yanxia. No idea what this would be. And then there's Jin land. At least this Jin comes from the ancient name of Shanxi province, which is Jin. It's this part over here. Much like, I don't know, Canton had Yue and um, Shanghai, the, the eastern region, has Wu. You know, this is a real name. I have no idea if Bashulia also has like anything. And then, of course, the, the, the guy that I found from Twitter is like a Trump, I don't know, a Japanese Trump supporter? I don't know what the fuck is going on. Um... Yeah, no idea what this says. This is Japanese. I don't speak Japanese. Hashtag MAGA. Hashtag RT. Like what? Like Russia Today. 
Shanghai Dooley. <laughs> Shanghai Independent. Hashtag Shanghai Independence. I can read this because this is an... I'm not sure if this is kanji or just straight up Chinese. Taiwan Junction Dooley. Like real, actual Taiwan independence. I don't know. Free China? Minju uh, Zhongguo. Democratic China. How is this democratic? I don't know. Xiangan Dooley. Hashtag um, fucking uh, Hong Kong independence. 2021 Zhongguo Jieti. Wait, what the fuck is this? I have no idea what this means. Is it like structure? I don't know. Um, yeah, I have no idea. He misspelled Guangdong, which is Canton. He fucking... How do you misspell something in Chinese? It's even impossible. Um, Falun Dafa! Fucking Falun Gong. What the fuck? Hashtag Manchurian independence. I don't know. I just... Shina. This is, by the way... Um, I know this one. This is Japanese. This is like a derogatory term for China. Like, in the West, we say China, and it's normal. In Ch in Japanese, Shina, which is this thing, is actually like Chinese... as like a Chinese dog. Like, they also, in their language, would... Like, say, Chugoku, I guess, is the way you pronounce it, which is Zhongguo, the central country, although, you know, with the traditional characters, which is this one. So there's two ways of saying China, either China in a respective way, or, like, Chinese dog, Shina, which is sort of, which is the, the term that they were using, you know, in, uh, in like, the 1930s. Yeah. Uh, Shina something Minsu Fengxia Duli. Basically, the <laughs> independence, uh, the, the independence of the, like, you know, the, uh, separate independence of the single ethnicities of China. Zhonggong something. I, ah, my Chinese is getting bad. Something about the Chinese Communist Party. Yeah, I don't... I don't know. I don't know what the fuck. I'm just, like, speechless. And there's even there's even worse. There's even worse. Let's like, let's go further down. There's even worse. And by the way, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like very, very quickly. Whoa, what the fuck? Stop. Another one. This, this one is just even more fucking insane. Instead of just having a single PR China, you know. Oh no, 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 no. Or this is, this is just the end game. This is like the top, you know, the the icing on the cake. We see again the Jinjuria. Again, the Muslim Republic of whatever. This time it's just called Cubstan. <laughs> I don't know where the cub comes from. We see again Jinland, again Yu Yansia, again Manchukuo, fucking for some reason. Uh, here, instead of just the PR China that you saw earlier and like the Qingdao Republic, there's a Xiejuria. Ah, what? And what is this spelling, by the way? Why hell yeah. And the Chinese characters are too small for me to read. Like, Hun Hai Li Ya. Something like that. I don't know. And then, and then it's even worse. Henan is just like divided into 17 fucking countries. States of Jishania. Brother, you're fucking insane. This is like supposed to be like a federal, a federal China. I guess this this is supposed to be like China, but it's like in this case, it's not enough that China's fucking tiny. You've got to like federalize it even further. And there's Zhao Lan, Zheng Jia, Xiao Lan. What the fuck is going on? And all of them with the like old Republic of China flag. What the fuck is going on here? Again, Basuria again. Bashulia. Uh, here this time they've split off the sort of Yunnan Guizhou Union in Vietnam and Yehutland. Uh, <laughs> and Dien this Vietnam thing, by the way, is like Yun Yue. This is just the combination of Yue that would be like Vietnam. This this character. In uh, in Chinese is also the same one that is used in the in the Yunnan, which is Vietnam in Chinese. 
So this is like the Yun Viet country, and it's like a real thing. Like again, there's there's a few moments in history in which um the this region is basically doing its own thing. And Dien is really one of the ethnicities that is that is present there, or also like a group of tribes. Uh, but again, this also has like a hand majority population today. It's had a hand majority population since the 1700s. And like there's 17 ethnic groups in there. Like, oh my god, my head is exploding right now. This time they've added Macau though. Nice equal representation for Macau, which is actually a lot more like different from the rest of like Cantonia than Hong Kong is from the rest of Cantonia. So nice. We we have um <laughs> we have achieved intersectionality with the Macau independence uh movement. Uh, what is this Iwania with a one? Where is this one? Oh, it's this one. This is an independent country. It's not part of the Federation of Jisiania or Chisiania. I don't fucking know. They've split up Gutland this time into Shanghai, which for some reason is spelled Tsaonhai. But yeah, the, the Chinese characters is just Shanghai. Jiangnan, which is the Nanjing area, into Kanoya, this Hawaii thing, I don't know. And then, again, they've decided for some fucking reason to give Shanghai the colonial flag, although this time they at least have the decency to remove, like, the foreign flags <laughs> of the international settlement from it, so, okay. Uh, but then they've decided to re... You know, the, there's also a, a sort of small Gutland, Golandia, with the Dutch flag, question mark. Just, yeah, I don't know what's going on. Uyelia. And then there's a, for some reason, a Huechuria. Not sure what that is supposed to represent. And they've, they've picked a really odd flag. This is the flag of a Shanghai municipal Japanese puppet government between 1937 and 1939 that was run by this Buddhist extremist cleric cult leader called the Shanghai Great Way government. Go look it up. Not sure how, why it's not in Shanghai. This is not Shanghai. Not sure why it's not in Shanghai. Not sure why there's a Buddhist extremist state over here. Not sure why, not sure why they've picked this flag. I'm just like, I don't know what's going on, man. And then there's Jingjuria doing its own thing. Um... And Fuxiangria, but by now we've, we've, we've become well acquainted with Fuxiangria and Jingjuria and Comland. Although this time instead of Hokkien, they've decided to make a greater Hokkien, uh, which is Hokkien plus southern like Zhejiang province called Banvedia. Just shoot me. Shoot me. I have no idea. And of course it's a fucking Japanese Twitter account with... Hashtag 24, the year 2040, something I don't understand in Japanese. Uh, yeah, like, in 33 years, the People's Republic of China will, I don't know, be separated. And uh, the, the, this is the, ch the map of China, Japanese, I don't speak Japanese. Uh, today's CIS countries question mark confederation of independent systems okay yeah i just real map of the balkanization on china 2.0 <laughs> i just love these things man this is just so great yeah and then we have just like i think this is just the top one this is just the 100 percent greatest one it's the quintessential, most detailed one. Uh, the map of the National Independence Movement of the Far East. Some names and flags are invented by the author. Really now? Who would have... You know, yeah. Uh, Jacob Hughes. Now, uh, this... There's an article that I'll link. There's basically this Chinese guy that now lives in the United States that, like, 
basically wanted to be like Chinese Jordan Peterson. And like his theory is that China is like, uh, China's not a nation state. China is like this empire where the subject peoples, which includes like the majority Han people, are just deprived of a national livelihood by the fact that this greater Chinese empire thing exists. And so this is why there's supposed to be all these, you know, all these countries breaking apart because otherwise there's not going to be any nation state, uh, you know, any, any like uh, healthy national development for these quote unquote subject peoples uh, that are just like oppressed by the evil China. You got that good. You didn't get that. Go read the article. And basically, this is what inspires some of these like insane maps where China's divided into 17 things. But here it takes it even further and just like divides up India as well into like 17 million things. Um, yeah. Um, it divides up Pakistan also into a gorillion, you know, things. Uh, Afghanistan divided up Russia of course uh, divided into its ethnic republics or, or whatever although Amur would be Chinese uh, Russian Kamchatka I knew for once Japan gets a bit of the stick as well and I love this <laughs> look in Korea North Korea is still around and also eats up the Korean parts of Manchuria Manchuria is still around and eats up the Manchu parts, I suppose, of Inner Mongolia. Look at the detail on this. Like, they even went to the single, like, subdivisions, the little prefectures. This, by far, is just, like, the most high-effort one of them all. Like, it doesn't just take the provinces and... No, 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 no. This, this goes, like, full-on, like, nerd, like, map nerd. And, like, I love how Tsiedreria over here eats up a part of um, Manchuria because this is supposed to represent like the settlement of, uh, of people from Shandong that migrated over to Manchuria. Although today they'd be the majority of this as well. And it's just like a, a nice little overseas territory. And then you've got your Uencia, you know, being retarded. Parts of Inner Mongolia, but not all of it, go to Mongolia. The ones that are majority Chinese stay in the respect of Chinese territories or, or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> this one doesn't completely split up China, but there's a China that has the real, like, modern flag of China instead of some weird, like, Republic of China flag that's just fucking tiny. And then all the other ones are just, like, meticulously, you know, borderized. And for some reason, Shanghai goes back to the fucking international settlement flag because fuck you. Gotland is the rest of the area that is, however, uh, with, again, the fucking religious extremist Buddhist flag. Ryukyu independence. Taiwan independence, but it's Formosa, and it's got the stupid flag. The Philippines has some... In <laughs> That's just insane. There's a tiny fucking country here. Why? <laughs> this is mostly populated by people that are, like, linguistically similar to Hokkien, you know, the Min, the Fujianese. For some reason, though, it's not part of Hokkienam, um, which also doesn't gobble up southern... I don't know, like, this is just... Hakka land! Hakka have no state. How epic. Hong Kong and Macau are independent. Hong Kong has the British flag. The first one also, this is like the first one that has uh, Hainan Island being independent. Cantonia, that doesn't like include all of Guangxi. Guangxi is like split between a part that's part of Cantonia, that's like the Han part, and I guess a Zhuang region that is its own country. Yeah, again, Yehetland, Dientnam, and all these places. Um, Myanmar, of course, is split up into 17 parts, which, yeah. I like how you can just barely see how Vietnam is split in two because why the fuck not? And for some reason, the North Vietnam has like the 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 Viet Cong flag. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. And of course, Bashulia, our good old friend Bashulia, hail Bashulia, and uh, Jinjuria over here again with the Wu Chang uprising flag, and again Cubstan. For some reason, 
the southern Cubstan has this Teutonic Knights flag kind of thing. And here, I love it. He, they actually annexed the majority, like Kyrgyz parts of China or of East Turk or of Xinjiang. Instead of like giving it all to East Turkestan, they just gave it to Kazakhstan, you know, up here. They gave it to Kyrgyzstan and they gave it to Taj Tajikistan. This is basically just like the fucking. Um, that one time. Some fucking guy on Reddit posts like a map from like Victoria 2 of like, oh, I don't know, the greater state, ethno state of something, you know? And it's like, <laughs> I just love it. There are just so many great parts. Fucking 11 out of 10. This is so great. I love this one. Like, it doesn't make any sense, but I love it. This, this is by far the highest effort one. And uh, yeah, uh, for some reason, the like, the place the, the the thread on Reddit, this is this is just like how this is created. That this entire thing, this entire China map debacle, how it is created. It's just because people are dumb. Like just just read this post by Mister the Dark One. If you're reading this, by the way, I'm sorry, uh, but your your post makes no fucking sense and your brain is rotting. Uh, you should go check that out. Like in the Reddit thread where this was posted. This map was posted on our China before by someone I highly believe to be a Chinese propagandist. This map, by the way. Uh, like, if in China... Like, some people would be like, oh, if, like, in China you get, like, spotted posting this map by the, the, the fucking... By the Wumao army, by the Chinese internet troll, the CCP trolls, they're going to throw you into a labor camp and execute you, you know? Like, some people would go like that. But, like, clearly this is not, like, something that the Chinese government would approve of, right? Anyway, I believe this map is being spread by them to create a sense that there are credible... in To create a sense that there are credible independence movements within Chinese borders. Probably as a precursor to another crackdown on freedoms within China. What is the logic? And he's getting upvoted. You know, there was, like, no one in this thread. So five points is, like, a lot, quote-unquote. Like, what, 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 what is the, like, a lot, okay, so what he's saying is that there's a, there's a CCP troll that's posting this map on Reddit in order to make the Chinese government look good, I guess, among Redditors? if it makes a crackdown on freedoms within China, because it's like, oh, see, there's like all these independence movements, we need to crack down on them. Like, what is the logic? <laughs> it's just, oh, I don't know. Do I have anything else? Oh, of course, another one of these. I, I, don't, I don't have the strength to fucking look at this anymore. I, oh, and of course, I love this one. I love how it, uh, I love how this one gives a part to India. <laughs> Oh my god. Holy fucking shit. Yeah, yeah. I love how this one does does have like a timeline. Just this very, very great. I I'm done. I just don't have the strength anymore. I've got I've got like a bunch more. There's like a couple ones that are just like LARP where like you see the com that's like LARP. Uh that's like uh wank. It's like fascist China wank where they're like Ha uh, yeah, uh, I hate the CCP, so I made a map of, like, non-CCP China that's, like, fucking gigantic. Like, just fucking the Greater Ming Dynasty or something. And it's, like, the fascist China. And it's, like, okay, sure. Sure thing. Um, yeah. And then there's just people who do a bunch of, like, retarded alternate history things. This is just, like, a close-up of some of the other ones. But, yeah. I, I hope you've enjoyed this rant. These people are all insane. Um, they should probably all be executed and sent to a uh, Xinjiang re-education camp to pick cotton um, and, like, sing Why Beijing Tiananmen all day.
uh, I fully support the leadership of the, the Chinese Communist Party under the core leadership of comrade Xi Jinping. I mean, if the alternative is these people who go around Reddit and Twitter making like fantasy maps of the Chinese collapse that's going to kill 400 million people and like because we, we hate the CCP, then I don't know. I guess uh, I guess I'm a dengist now. Yeah, that's just that's just, that's just it. I'm a dentist.